Hi guys, this is Ratchet Saw, and we are playing Criminal Case Elite Mode, Case 8. Hashtag murder. Let's launch after 3 and we need to stop the bus from leaving because we haven't solved the case yet. No, nobody's going anywhere. Okay. Kevin East, stop that bus right now. But detectives, I've answered all your questions. I need to get this tour back on the road. You and your passengers can leave as soon as we figure out who murdered Marigold Carson. And not one second before. Alright, alright. We'll wait. Well, there we go. He's pressuring us. Can you believe that, Katarina? He was about to drive off into the sunset with a busload of our suspects. Speaking of sunset, let's head across the border for another sweep of the crime scene. I don't want to be on that island after dark. Yeah, who knows what it's like when it's dark. I am i don't want to see that anymore. I hate spiders. Oh, we gotta go. Okay. Wow, Marigold really was famous, Katarina. She saw the cover of that teeny magazine. Oh, someone's viciously defaced this. Let's go have to sample of those fragments. They could help us track down who did this. And look, there's a faded note on what looks to be a pile of offerings near the altar. I'll grab your dusty kit to see what that says. And these broken pieces looks like some sort of ornament, Katarina. Let's put this back together as well. I'm anxious to get back to Queen Justine's citizens, but not until we've caught Marigold's killer. Alright. Ah, nothing just hurts up to go to the window. Popping up. Anyway. Alright, it's a skull. Oh, it says Marigold. Oh. What's that supposed to be? This is a Day of the Dead mask, Katarina. An expensive one, too. It's encrusted with diamonds and engraved with gold. Ah, right, Day of the Dead in Mexico. And the victim's name is on it. Do you think this was some sort of gift? There's only one suspect who could afford something like this, Katarina. And that's RJ Fielding. Oh, yeah. This mask is a pretty generous gift. Maybe they were closer than we thought. Let's ask Fielding and find out. Alright. Alright, now let's collect this from the magazine cover. Oh, what's happening? What's this supposed to be? Skin cells? Beige fragments. Cut here, let's get these fragments to Priya fast. Whatever they are, they may give us some clue as to who defaced Marigold's magazine cover. Alright. Alright, now these offerings. Let me check the internet. It's connected, but why is it so slow? I don't understand this. It's in Spanish. The message written on this offering card is in Spanish, Catalina. 
I'll just run that through the translator. Ah, it says, forgive me for the pink-haired pixie. The pink-haired pixie is obviously the victim. And the only suspect who presented offering to the dolls in Spanish is Stephanie's grandfather, Jose Carvalho. What are all these offerings to the dolls about anyway, Katarina? Why was Jose asking for forgiveness? And how does Berigo fit into all of this? Is he the killer? Come on, let's get some answers from Jose Carvalho. Alright, let's hear from him then. What's that about? Alright, first let's go to RJ. Don't mind me, folks. Just so we are button back on. Dang thing got a thing up and popped off. We're curious about the mask you gave to the victim. Quite an extravagant gift for someone you just met on a bus tour. Truth be told, I was quite enamored by Mary Goats' buzzer feed before today, yes ma'am. So when she posted that she was coming on this island tour, I booked a ticket. I thought that mask would win her affection, seeing she was into spooky things like that. I take it since Marigold broke it, the mask didn't go down well. It did not. Marigold rejected me, if you can believe that. That's never happened before. I thought she might have been intimidated by my money, but she said she wouldn't date a 30 year old guy. Well, I think she was right. A bruised ego is a strong motive for murder. It wouldn't be the first time. I didn't kill her if that's what you're suggesting. But you folks are free to arrest me. That would at least be something exciting. Oh, please, let's just leave. Could be him. Alright, let's go to Jose now. Let's go to Crazy Guy. What are you people still doing on the island? You must leave. Now. Dude. Why? What's happening? Marigold made the dolls angry with all her selfies and whatnot. I try to appease them, but if they don't accept my offering, bad things will happen. What do you mean bad things? They're just dolls. No. Not according to the ancient legends. I've taught her to Tiffany to be careful around the dolls. I try to live peacefully with them, collecting my spiders, sewing quietly in the evenings, but you mustn't anger the dolls. And how did you appease her for Marigos' disrespect? Was she the sacrifice? No, I would never do that. But please, you must go. Now. Oh dude, I'm not leaving and you're not going to scare me away. What are these page fragments? Katrina, you know the saying you can pick your friends but you can't pick your family? No. Uh, do I ever? My parents and I have rarely seen eye to eye and they've never understood me or my problems the way you guys do. You were the ones who helped me get over my unfortunate vampire romance. And I know you guys will support me trying to help Justine. Okay, I know Luke rolls his eyes a lot. The chief yells at me and Hope is constantly teasing me. But it's just because you all care so much. But what does family have to do with the fragments Katria found on that defaced magazine? The fragments are skin skill cells, Katrina. And while I can't map out a comprehensive profile, there's enough here to indicate the DNA is very similar to the victims. It's not a perfect match for Medico herself, but whoever the face that magazine left behind those skin cells is a member of her family. While well, she was with her cousin. Her family? Since it's a Carson, Mericos' cousin certainly fits that bill. But why would she scratch out Mericos' picture like that? Let's ask Cecilia and find out. Yeah. You failed to mention something to us. What went wrong? Oh, detectives. Why haven't you found Mericos' killer yet? I... I need to know who do such a thing. You're obviously upset, but we know there was bad blood between you and your cousin. We found that magazine you defaced. How? How did you know I I did that? But yes, I was mad at Marigold. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't even be on this stupid bus tour. 
But weren't you excited to be getting away from things? I was totally looking forward to a super fab girly trip to Mexico. Sunshine, swimming pools, and margaritas. I even see some new outfits for the trip. But instead of beaches and burritos, we end up on that godforsaken island with terrifying dolls and spiders. That place creeped me out. When we got inside that shrine, I totally flipped. What do you mean flipped? Did you hurt Marigold? No, but we had the biggest argument ever. Then I ran off. That was the last time I saw Marigold alive. Oh, dear. Mary Costa might have been popular online, but she, she certainly wasn't making any friends in real life. RJ Fielding, while charming on the surface, bothers me, Katarina. His bored with life trails seeking is oddly disturbing. I wonder how he really feels about Mary Gold's rejection. To make this cousin blow up after being dragged to an island of creepy dolls and spiders when she expected to be on a relaxing Mexican holiday. While Jose Carvalho may have taken crazy superstitions too far, sacrificing Marigold to the dolls. If we're going to close this case, we need more clues, Katarina. So let's take one more look outside before it gets dark. Yeah, they want to know how... How that island is like at night. Okay, let's... let's go. Look, Katarina, that's the victim's phone. As an online influencer, I imagine Marigold's entire life is on this device. And I agree, that pile of leaves looks like it's been recently disturbed. Something could be hidden under there. Maybe the murder weapon. I can almost feel it, Katarina. Marigold's skill is nearly within our grasp. Okay. Right, let's unlock the phone. Oh, don't tell me the internet is not working. I was only, I was only testing out the speed test only to determine what bitrate to use for my next live stream. It is connected. What's going on? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, it's unlocked. We got Mercos' phone unlocked, but I can't see any obvious clues on the home screen, Katarina. And there are, there's so many stuff here. But I bet Hope can find something on this phone. Okay. Eighteen hours. Okay, now let's look through the pile of leaves. Found a murder weapon. Wow, that's one big knife, Katarina. And there's blood all over it. This machete must be the murder weapon. Let's have Priya examine every square millimeter of this machete for clues. 
Okay. What's on Marigold's phone? You wouldn't believe the amount of trivial stuff Marigold has on her phone, Katarina. Countless blog posts and text messages, and literally thousands of photos. Well, that's to be expected of an influencer. But there's one photo here that might just crack this case. Well, don't hold out on us, genius. What do you have? The photo was taken seconds before Marigold was murdered. Hey, it's a picture of her killer. A killer? Who is it? Judging by the angle of the photo, the victim was either falling or running away when she took it, so the image is incredibly blurred. And although you can't make a positive identification, one feature is crystal clear. The killer has a mole. The killer can't hide that from us, Katarina. We're looking for someone with a mole. Okay. Now the murder weapon. If this specialty tells us anything, Katarina, it's that there's a violent killer out there. So I'll keep my report brief. It goes without saying the blood is a match for the victim, and the pattern of the splatters is consistent with the brutal attack. However, it's the pattern of these mud splashes on the machete's handle that I'm more interested in. Mud splashes? Exactly! You see, the angle of the mud splatters indicate the killer must have been splashed with mud during the murder. Which means the killer's clothes will be stained with mud. We'll be able to spot that a mile away, Katarina. Okay. I don't know about you, Katarina, but I've had my feel of this creepy island. It's time we caught Marigold's as killer and got out of here. Yeah. So who's the psychopath around here? Well, he's so crazy, but he doesn't have a mole or what? So he's not the killer. Well, there's only one of a few cases, a criminal case, where we get to arrest a child. How could you do that, Tiffany? What the hell? Wait, Tiffany is the killer? A 10-year-old child? Is it true, Tiffany? Did you... did you hurt Marigold? Of course I did, silly. I told you I didn't like her. But why? Because she wouldn't play with you and called you names? No! Because my plastic doll eyes look into hers and saw the darkness and ugliness of her soul. What? Wait, what? You're one of the dolls? Yes, but I'm not like the rest of these lifeless toys. Oh my god. These dolls can't see into the hearts and souls of you humans, but I can. And I could see right through Marigold's soul, and all I saw was darkness. So you're not actually a little girl? Which means Jose isn't really your grandfather. No, but his arrival on my island is what brought me to life. For decades I was lifeless too, but Jose's devotion to me and the other dolls awakened an ancient magic that had enchanted me. I opened my plastic eyes, walking and talking like a real child. We live in peace on this island, he and I. Tourists like you come and go, and I find humans mildly entertaining. But Marigold? Her heart was rotten. I didn't want her on my island, so I chopped her up. Jesus. And now it's time for you to leave too. Oh no, you're not. No. Stand down, Tiffany. Ah. Uh, oh my gosh, she's going for us. Shoot her. Bang. Well, you shot a child, but she's not really a child, so please. Don't worry. Oh my god, Katrina, we almost got taken out by a murderous doll. That's one for the books. Tiffany definitely wasn't human. She was some enchanted doll. Who knew that was a thing? 
At least the rest of these dolls are just toys. Would have a really big problem right now if they weren't. Jose Cavallo obviously was a Tiffany's grandfather, and he certainly knew Tiffany was a threat. Yeah. But how did Tiffany come to life in the first place? And did Jose know she'd murdered Marigold Carson all along? Clearly, there are a lot of questions to answer. But right now, let's head back stateside and report to the chief. Okay. That was something. Alright, we gotta stop here. We gotta continue playing in something wicked this way. Cubs number three. So, thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like to this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye!